My name's Tanya Dawson. I'll be presenting the webinar today. And with me at Reckon I have Karen Weir, who's going to assist me in the housekeeping and making sure that we're all on track and also checking in with any questions that you have. So this webinar is really designed for practice administrators and understanding what we can do with the budget module in practice management and where the budgets flow through in practice management and in practice IQ. The budget module allows you to create, edit, delete and complete budgets for staff members. A little bit of housekeeping as we go through. You'll see in your question pane on the right hand side of your GoToWebinar, there'll be a question pane. If you do have any questions, please type them in the questions area and I'll stop probably every 10 minutes and check if there's any questions and then we'll continue on. If there are questions that I know that I will answer later, I may not answer them straight away in that, that section, but I will answer them towards the end. But please write them down as we're going um, and we will answer them if we've answered them uh, as well. We'll try and keep those anonymous so that um, you know there is no um, questions that are out of bounds here in terms of relation to the, the budget module. So please ask away. So let's just have a look firstly at um, what our agenda is. So our global agenda, as I said, is understanding what you can achieve, achieve using the budgets application. So the budget application will be on the um, app, central application list provided you've got the right Joe admin rights. There's also many ways that you can manipulate budgets to work for how you need to work. So hopefully we'll go through those as well today. So our specific agenda will look at what drives budgets, what is actually in the CIS software in terms of our financial periods. We have periods of the years. They create the budget periods for the staff members. The staff members or the fee owners are set up to allow different options that will flow through into the budgets application. Internal matters, they'll have different categories. We'll look at how that affects our budgets. We'll look at the system and user settings that affect budgets. We'll have a look at the security options that are available and we'll also go exploring through the practice management budget console. Within that budget console we'll have a look at how we use the budget calculator, how you can apply and set up templates. We'll look at the various reporting options in both practice management and IQ. I'll go through some frequently asked questions and some scenarios. And then we'll also finish off on where you can get more support. So firstly, let's just have a look at what does the budget console actually look like before we start diving into the different areas that control where we see the information from budgets. Firstly, we have two types of budgets that we can um, enter into the software. The first budget is known as the capacity budget. It looks at the gross capacity of a staff member by looking at what their standard hours are, how many days in the week that staff member has, and comes up with a gross capacity. Then as you enter in other non-billable or unavailable time, you will then reduce your gross capacity and it will leave a net capacity. The idea behind the capacity budget is allows you on a week based level to enter in um, any particular leave that you know that people will take or sick leave or, or whatever. You can adjust it so it can be a dynamic budget. It can be a moving budget if you like. It doesn't have to be. You can set it and forget it or you can use it as a dynamic budget. The purpose for the dynamic budget would be if you're looking at workflow and resource planning in a much greater level, then you want to know the exact capacity of your staff members. So as they go for exam leave, etc., you want to put that into the budget so it reduces the capacity so that you can plan for jobs. The other type of budget that we can set up in the practice management budget area is a financial budget. And the financial budget can be used quite simply as a static 
single budget that will enter in a dollar figure per month or you could use hours per month. So depending if you're a dollar based or an hours based, you can change your view. The capacity is typically fixed. Um, it's a set and forget. It's a planning tool. It's, it's almost like your forecast. You can go in there and adjust it if you need to, but again, you can do it once and leave it um, if you need to based on a financial budget. So that's just the two areas that we're going to look at. What we're going to do now is explore a little bit more around what controls what we see in the capacity budget in terms of staff members. Just checking in, I uh, have a question here that the sound has been lost. Can we confirm that, Karen, that that is just um, one person here? Thank you very much. I can still hear you from other people, so I will continue on. As I said, if for some reason your sound does get lost, the recording is available on the website after the webinar, or you can switch to VoIP. Thank you very much. I'll keep moving on. Great to see that you're using the question pane, and I will continue on. So we'll look through now what drives those capacity figures in terms of the rates, the days in the week and the standard hours. So the first thing that we do need to look at is our financial periods. So before the budget can be created for the year, we need to make sure that the financial period exists. On the website later this afternoon, you'll also see another video uploaded called New Year and Standard Matter Rollovers. Uh, we produced that video last year that you can still review and it will give you an interactive small course on how to go through and set up your financial periods and allow you to go in and test that. You probably already started that, but if you have new people for next year that are going into that role, it's a great video to have um, on board so that you can remember from year to year. So what I might do is just go into the um, timesheet administration area. I'll bring that across into our actual software. To go into the periods, you go timesheets and then periods. You'll see a warning as you come in here. Now we have a status now on the timesheet periods. I'm using 10.1 in this software. This will also be relevant for 9.5, 9.15 of the software. It's been there for a while. They're the current versions that you should be on. So once you've checked that all the information for the year is correct and all holidays have been entered, once budgets are underway for the year, you will not be able to reactivate the calendar. Excuse me. So it is important that you do set up the calendar correctly if you want to use a true capacity budget. Okay, so I'll understand a little bit more about what I mean by that when we go into the financial period. So the financial period screen will then open. What I'm going to do firstly is create the new year. I'm going to create the 2016 year. Probably what I suggest for those firms also that are creating uh, workflow is that you're actually creating the future year in the head. So rather than just in Australia's case, 30 June 2016 is the next financial year, I probably would have already created that last year because our workflow reports, as I, I start looking at workflow in the future, and when I get to May, June, I want to be able to see July, August, September, which is in the next financial year. So just a tip that you may actually want to go and create the 30 June 2017 year in Australia or the 31st of March 2016-17 in NZ. Our standard periods are going to be calendar months and our WIP are going to align to the calendar months. So I'm going to press OK. So you'll see here that there is this status. And at the moment, the status of that year is active. So for the next year, the 27 year, you may leave that active until you're ready to do your budgets, but you have the financial period set up for your workflow purposes. Once we're in the financial periods, you can go through and check your weeks and your debtors periods, make sure you're happy with those dates. And the other area that you may need to revisit is holidays. The holidays, if we have a look at a holiday for December, 
you'll see that we have a week in here for December. Around Christmas time, we've got this week here, week number 31. I'm going to put in the Christmas Day holiday. So rather than being a standard hours of 37.5, once I enter in a holiday, I right click a new holiday, 25th of December, that is a standard holiday across all regions, and I'll explain regions in a minute, and we're not expecting to work any hours on that day. So I can press OK. I can also add another holiday, uh, Boxing Day. I'm assuming that is the 26th, so that actually may fall on the 28th this year. If I just close out of that, I'll go back to our whip periods and we'll have a look at our December period. You'll see as I'm starting to enter through the information, our standard hours are reducing from 37 and a half to 30 for that week and the following week has also been reduced. Okay. So the purpose of the financial periods is to allow people to change their capacity so that the standard hours being reduced for the public holidays as a standard measure. The other area that you can introduce if you have regional holidays, i.e. you have offices in multiple countries or multiple states and they have regional variances, then you can select a region for that. So any staff member that belong to that region, i.e. Melbourne Cup Day, they will get a regional holiday which would reduce their standard hours. Okay. So that's the purpose of the region. If you don't select a region, then it applies to all staff. If you are setting up holidays in your calendar, you do not need to have an internal matter for statutory holidays. Okay, so you use one method or the other. You don't use both in combination. So I do not need to add in an internal matter to put public holidays in. Is there any questions there on the public holidays before I move on? Okay. Once you've gone through and completed your public holidays, you then need to change your status to completed. It's only when the status is changed from active to completed that you'll be able to go and enter in budgets for your staff members for that period. So I'm going to complete 2016 um, in my example, even though I haven't put all the public holidays in, I'm just going to close that and I will save the changes. Okay. So that's our financial periods. The fee and a console is next. So in the fee earner console, each particular fee earner, when you go in, will have um, a week budget. It tells me how many days of the week that they work, or what days they're in the office. So you'll see that on the right hand side, or you can click on the left hand side to see your week budget. So if you have part time staff members that work on set days, then you can put the set hours per day that they are expected to work. If you're using that in conjunction with public holidays, it means that the standard hours for that staff member will automatically be reduced. So it does work for part-time staff. If I don't work on Monday, my standard hours is zero. There's a public holiday on Monday. It doesn't make any difference to my standard hours. It would normally be zero. If I work on a Tuesday and there's a public holiday, then I would get the public holiday on that particular user. The other area that controls the standard hours is the standard time day for the staff member. So you can see in my example I have 7.5 hours. That is helping produce the number of standard hours for the week based on the days of the week that I work. The other important item that you have here is your start date. 
So if you have staff members that are added through the year, you need to make sure that the start date is the effective date that you want to create one, their timesheet headers and two, a budget from that time. So the budget area will be blank up until that start date. The standard hours and the, the default start date and the number of units per hour are controlled through the system and user product settings area. In here there is a system setting that you can select from the top and down on the left hand side you'll see time cost and then you'll see that this is the area that controls the practice standard of standard days, uh, standard hours per day, typical start date if you haven't changed it and the units per hour. So if you're finding you're having to change that for every staff member that you add, you can update your system setting so that it's, it's reflective of what your practice is doing. So there's our fee earner setup. Is there any questions on the fee earner setups before we move on to the next section? Doesn't seem to be any questions so far, that's great. So let's just recap, what do we need to do before we can go into the budgets? When we look at the budget screen, you'll see that there is a year at the top. It must be completed, so those financial periods must be completed before we can go into the budget console. We see the fee owner controls the rates, the days and the standard hours based on the fee owner console here. And the start date, will be when we have standard hours and days per week that will populate. I will go through an example later where we can change a fee unit that might be a five days a week down to three day a week and we'll have a look at how we would change that in the budget and apply that change of days for the remaining part of the year. So we'll go through that scenario later when we open up the budgets console. So the fee earn a week, as I was saying, if they do change, um, you do have the opportunity to go in and change the number of hours. So if I change the, the Monday here to four hours instead of 7.5, it has an edit date of when that becomes effective. And the system will prompt and warn you that if you change the number of days in the week that they use and you do have a budget in place, then you'll get a little error, um, not an error message, but a, a visual cue to tell you that budgets have been created for the year, please go into budgets and review the standard hours. So we will have a look at that in more detail when we get into the actual application. Um, but if you don't see that little prompt come up, it could be that um, you've upgraded from a previous version of the software and the status for that particular user for the budget is blank and therefore no warnings would appear. So I'll show you what that is when we look at the console to make sure that you do get those warnings showing up. I have a question here, is there an option for part-time employees who work two days at one week and then three days the next? The only real way that you can deal with those sort of situations where they fluctuate uh, through is if we go into back into our timesheet admin area. The only way that you can change the standard hours for that particular user is when you go and look at their timesheet header. I'm in the new year. I'll just go and create a timesheet header, for example. If I look at a particular user, um, I've got a part-timer here in Tony Douglas. I can edit the timesheet header for that particular week to be 15 hours. So it's going to edit the standard hours and that will flow through into Practice IQ. It will flow through into Practice Management for that particular week that the standard hours is 15. It won't automatically flow through into your budgets for that week. Okay, so if you're wanting to maintain a fluctuating capacity budget, you would need to go into the budgets application and edit that particular week. OK, 
Okay. So any other questions there on part-time staff? Okay, great. Okay, so if there has been any changes to the standard hours or anything like that from the fee earner console, it will give you that little red warning to show that something's changed. When you go and open the budget screen and select the particular user, in this case we've selected Tony Douglas, it will come up with another little warning saying a factor affecting the standard hours for this fee owner has changed, please review the budget. So you do get prompt to tell you when you need to go in and change those things. And we'll explore that more when we go into the actual console. Okay, if we come back into the screen before, I did say that there was other factors that we need to take in consideration if we're looking at capacity budget. There is what we call billable, non-billable time and unavailable time. So we have a budget category that is applied to each of the standard matters. So in this particular standard matter, uh, internal matter called administration, we have a budget category that we've classified as non-billable. The other standard classification that we have here is called unavailable time. If the standard matter was leave, then that might go under unavailable time. Okay, it's just giving you two different classifications to be able to reduce your gross capacity. So each standard matter, sorry, each internal matter has a budget category. And you'll see here that that is on by default as a mandatory field. The other item that controls that what you see in the budgets console will be whether you want to show milestones for that internal matter. In the case of administration, there is no milestones underneath that one. In the case of internal matter called leave, typically you can set that up with a milestone template which would define the type of leave. So in underneath leave, you may have annual leave, compassionate leave, maternity leave, um, exam study leave, etc. all the different types of categories that you want to put in there. And on that particular internal matter, you would say yes to show milestones so that you can then put in each of the different type of leave in your budget so that you're reducing your capacity. They are available in this screen. On the left hand side, we have our standard matter, uh, sorry, our internal matter, I keep saying standard matter, but our internal matter or our overhead matter. And then on the right hand side, you'll see where that flows through into the different categories for our capacity budget. And you'll see here the milestones are not shown for administration, but we do have a milestone showing for annual leave and sick leave in the, um, the leave matter. The next area that is a control for the budgets, um, it's probably not used a great deal, so you don't need to focus too much on this one. Um, but again, in our system and user product settings area, in our system area, there is an underscore register and there are two items in here that can affect the budgets. The first one might be used uh, called budget authority object. By default, there is a number four in there. The number four means the authority is for partner access. Number five will be for manager access. Number six is for department access. So four, five or six are the standard ones that we can filter for. So you might have an instance where you've got a large practice and you want every manager to go in and set up their team's budgets, okay? So you might use the capacity budget in replacement of a spreadsheet going forward. So what some firms do is they, they have a big spreadsheet and they will put in the number of gross capacity they have and then they will take off on either a monthly basis um, what is not available, either a standard non-chargeable component or a forecast of leave. So the budget authority object, if you want to give other people access to budgets but not the whole staff, 
you can restrict that, say for example, if I change the four to a five, and I can give the Joe rights to say, this manager, Tanya Dawson, can only see everybody in her team when she goes into budget. So that's what the budget authority object is doing. Just explain that further. So example here, I've set this one up, it's, it's set to four, uh, four by partner. Adriali has got a number of staff attached to them and when they go in and log into budgets, they will only see that list, okay? They won't see Paul's and Sonali's. The other item in the SUP setting for budgets is the edit grace months. So if you've set up budgets, how many months prior would you allow people to edit? Some people say once the period's gone, we shouldn't be editing the budget. So there is a zero that you would put in here. Some people are delayed in their reporting and they might allow one or two months prior that anyone that has edit rights can go and edit the prior one or two months. So that's a, a system setting. By default, each user can have a grace period of months that has rights to edit budgets, how many months that is. There is also a, a Joe Admin setting that will overwrite that. Okay. So they're not commonly used those ones, but they are available. So the next area of consideration is, is who has access to budgets and what can they do once they're in budgets. So there is the Joe Admin security rights that you would have and typically you would set up profiles. Over here you can see I'm logged in looking at the profile for super, super user, which means I have full access. So the super user has access to budgets. They can override the grace period and edit all historical data. They have the ability to change the status of the budgets from, from active to complete and vice versa. They would have oh, sorry, they can edit budgets, so they can go in and edit the details of budgets. Allow unrestricted staff selections. That means that all those staff members back here are available to choose. This one really becomes irrelevant. Allow related sub staff selection because the super user has all access. But in the case where I was saying where you want to only allow managers access, that would be tick cross and this one would be ticked so that they would only see their team. Rate level six access. Some firms use the, the staff member rates. If I go into rates, so we know what we're talking about under fee earner rates. In fee earner rates, typically there are six rates that can be used for particular um, for each staff member or each rate group that you've created. So rate one to five are typically what you would see in timesheets and you can hide rate six, which is a cost rate. So within the budget application, you have the ability to see a cost rate if you've chosen to use that. If you use a cost rate, it will also give you a margin report when we look at the financial. So the cost rate obviously is highly sensitive information, so you would need to ensure that you have the appropriate Joe Admin security as to who can see cost rates. And if you are using Practice IQ, you would want to secure the report that would also expose cost rates. Show margin, if you're gonna use the cost rate, you may want to show the margins and the Balance check is a function within the budget application that will go and check and make sure that you don't have any net capacity in negative so things don't balance or add up. So what you would do in Joe Admin is that you would create a profile of the particular users that need to access budgets. And for that profile, if it was managers, you would go through and set the managers up into that group and give them the relevant access that they would need. Some firms have it completely locked off from staff and it is purely a financial controller admin access um, and is restricted. The other area that you do have in your Joe admin 
is that you can actually have what we call my budgets. So you can actually give users access to see their own budgets and you can also allow them edit rights or not. So if you're a, this is your budget for the year and we set and forget it, like that's what we've started at the start of the year, that's what we're working towards, then you would allow access but you would cross um, allow edit. And that might be under your default profile. So all users can see their own budget but they can't edit it. Where do the users see that? As I said, it would be in in the personal console. I'm just going to open that up. I'm logged as administrator. Administrator most likely doesn't have a budget, but you would see the My Budgets come up here, which would just give them their own access to see their budget. If you're a workflow or resource planning user, you would probably allow users access, potentially to adjust their capacity budget so that they can put in when they're taking leave, which would reduce their net capacity. Okay, so Joe Admin controls the access to it. So they're the administration functions that I suppose that are affecting the budget. What we'll do now is we'll actually go into the budget application and we will start entering a budget. We'll show you how that is done. So from your central login, you can see that you have budgets because it's turned on for the user that has access. Just have a question while that's opening. Is there a view of personal budgets available in version 9? Yes, it is. It's available in 9.1 X onwards. Um, it'll be in the Joe Admin rights that you'll need to go and turn that on for the users. Sorry, I have my budget console open. I'll just bring that across here for you. Okay. So now we're in our budgets console. There's the little ribbon across the top which is fairly standard in most of the consoles. It'll just be a, a fresh look and feel if you're not using version 10, but you will have a ribbon of some sort in version 9 as well. You will see that there is help in practice management, help in version 10, you'll probably see budgets in 9.15. I think there is budgets in there, but certainly in 10 series onwards, you'll find that we have started building out more help in different areas and certainly budgets is one of those ones that has been added in the last 12, 18 months. So we have budgets available here. In the screen on the left hand side, we don't really have many different consoles for you to look at in budgets. So if you don't want that area, you can unpin that or squish that across to the left. If you don't want to see it, give yourself some more real estate. You'll see at the moment we're looking at a financial year and we can see the status of that financial year. So we're going to go in and create the 2016 budgets and we haven't started anything yet so there is no status yet for this. Because I'm going to start this, I'm going to make it active and we're going to get started in creating a budget. So the first budget I'm going to look at, um, down the left hand side I can see the fee earners and all the fee earners that are active fee earners. If you have a large business um, and you want to group these by different groupings, I can see here that I can change the grouping by partner, by manager or by department. I'm going to leave it on my partner view so I can see what's happening in there. So I have a partner and I will pick Anna. As soon as I select a particular user, you'll notice that the icon for that particular user is a darker pink colour. This means that I've actually now created a budget for Anna Alice. The budget is going to be the same as the net capacity and the growth capacity because I haven't changed anything for that particular user. So if you do accidentally click on somebody, you've actually gone and created a budget for them. 
Okay, and if you're using Practice IQ and wonder why the budget is so high for, for callees, it's because I've gone and clicked on the button in budgets, therefore it's gone through and built a billable budget hours, which is the same as gross capacity if I hadn't finished completing her budget. Okay, so if I have made a mistake, I can clear the budget. When I remember how to do that. I'll reset budget. Oh, that'll reset it back to zero. Once I've created it, I would if this person was a non-chargeable resource, I would need to go through and add in edit mode and delete budget. The good old edit mode it gets us every time. So edit mode allows us to go in and change the details. So if you do create from by mistake, click on edit mode and then the delete option will come up in your action menu. Okay, so let's go back to Anna. So Anna, I can see here that there is a charge out rate for Anna for $300. There's the number of days in the week for this particular year is 260 days, which equates to a standard hours of 1950. Now some people have spreadsheets that they would use and work out what their net capacity is. The way that we can work the capacity budget is to, re to remove the need to have to create a spreadsheet for this and build up our net capacity by going through the process. So I might have asked the staff members in advance if they were planning to take leave. There might also be some standard leave that has to happen around Christmas, New Year. So I'm going to go in and do that in the unavailable time. So when I click on there, I'm going to go through the leave and I'm going to pick annual leave as my matter and milestone. And you'll see here that there is a, um, a, a row view of each particular week. I can scroll across to December and say, okay, well, the office will be closed this week and we take annual leave for that. Normally we take annual leave for this week as well. So as I'm putting those things in, you'll see here that the hours down the bottom for my net capacity for those three weeks now have been reduced to zero. Okay. If we close the office on the Friday of the week before, for example, and um, we do that, but we don't actually take that out of people's leave, you'll see that there is a, an area at the top here called less adjustment. So we might be nice in our firm and we just give people a day off um, where we're just going to adjust the standard hours for that week. Okay. So I've got the standard um, leave that that needs, that is compulsory for the user to take off. And then through our leave forecast, um, Anna has told us that she's taking uh, two weeks off in June, which is the last two weeks of the year. So we're going to take those off as a planning tool. And she's also going to take one week off in September to go skiing. Okay, so we've taken a forecast then of when she's going to take leave. We continue through the process. Some people might say, you know, we've got study leave planned and they normally happen on these periods in the month. Um, we don't plan for sick leave, so we don't put that in the budget. Some people say, I'm just going to reduce my administration time to factor in maybe some sick leave. Okay, so for now I'm just going to leave it as annual leave. So now I'm left with, well, and is probably not going to be 100% chargeable on the days that she's not taking leave. So Anna also has some administration work to do. So we can go into the non-billable area and go into administration. Before we do that, we'll also explain to you the public holidays. Have they been reduced? So the week ending of the 27th of December had one public holiday, if you remember, for Christmas. So it has reduced that week from 37.5 down to 30 already. And there was one day off. It was a four-day week uh, here. I can't remember if I went through that. So um, the, the 
Boxing Day holiday was on the Monday of that week and you can see that that has already been reduced for the days in the week for that period. So everything that we did earlier in timesheets and public holidays, they have been accounted for when we open up the budget module. So it's really important that you, if you're going to use those public holidays, that you do set them up and you complete that before you start entering in your budgets. Okay, so we've taken off our leave and I've now got some administration time. I'm just going to use administration as a general bucket of all the non-chargeable things that Anna might uh, need to do during the day. And there's a couple ways that I can enter this in. The first way that I'm going to show you is if I right click on the totals, you will see a load calculator. So if I click on the load calculator, I can pro rata my total budgeted non-billable hours for the year, which might be um, 260 hours. And it will just pro rata that across all the weeks, which will leave a remaining billable time. You'll notice that some of the weeks where she's already taken leave here, it says it is going to go into negative. Now, if I wasn't diligent and looking at that, and I said apply, you'll get a warning saying the value couldn't create the negatives in some columns. So it's smart enough to know that my 260 couldn't quite create all of those because it's not going to put the weeks that I'd already put in leave into, into credit. Okay, so I can either apply that um, a different way or I could go back into my load calculator and redo it here, calculate that. I want 260 hours. Obviously, I can't use it in that week. So rather than looking at the row view, this gives me the ability um, to put this in in a column view. So I can go back through and have a look at some of these hours here and I can just adjust them. And I can increase some of these to, to make the difference. Oh, 45 is not right. So anyway, I can keep going through that and I can make whatever edits that I need to. Oh, we'll change those to seven. And we're getting close. Another four hours somewhere. We'll make that. Okay. So I can apply that and it's still done the same. So there was a couple of errors that I made there, but you can see what I've been doing by the calculator. It's now just applying all of that on a pro rata basis across all the weeks. So I started off with a gross capacity of, of 1942 because I've reduced it by the adjustment for the one day off for the, the, the firm has given them. Then I have some administration hours, less my annual leave, which gives me a gross capacity for that user at 15.22. So 15.22, just bear with me a second. So we've got 15.22 divided by the 19.42.50 gives me a, a target percentage of this person of around 78%. Okay, so I'm just dividing that by my gross capacity to get a target percentage. That person is done, so we can change their status to complete. So let me go through some questions at this point here. When you click on the employee for the basic template of rate, day, standard hours comes up, um, where is it feeding from? Is this something our administrator will need to do to set up for each employee first? So this here, um, remember I said is going to be feeding through straight from the fee owner console. So if I look at Anna Alice, and we have a look at our fee earners. Oops, sorry, that fee owner rates, fee earners. My standard hours was coming from 7.5 hours, five days a week and my start date was before the financial year and my rate comes from the rate here that was set up for Anna at $300. Oops. 
So I marked the budget here complete for Anna because I was happy with that. Um, I can still come back in for Anna at another time and reactivate the week. Okay, so what happens sometimes is once you've completed some budgets, um, Anna has then moved on and she's progressed in the firm or she needs to have a higher charge out rate. So I would need to reactivate Anna's budget and she will get a new charge out rate from February. So I'm going to change that rate and make that 350. And it will say, do you want to apply the new rate for the remainder of the year? If I say yes, from February onwards, from the first week of February, I've now changed the rate to $350. And that has been applied now to every week after that point. So there is two little buttons that you see up on the toolbar here that you can flick between the hours view and the rate view. Um, so it would now then determine that in a dollar number for me under each week. Once I've applied that change, I might recomplete that week so that it's sort of marked as complete. So when you go into the budgets console and if you click on an employee and there are no figures coming through, it may mean that the year that you're selecting is not completed. So your timesheet period might still be active. So if it's active, you won't see any figures flow through into any of your users. It might also mean that your start date for the user is some point in advance. So you would need to also check your start date to make sure the start date aligns up with your periods. Um, so I think we've answered the future periods and we've got another question here. How do we apply a charge rate to a staff member that has two or more, um, two or more charge out rates, i.e. they have bookkeeping and they might have accounting? In that case, instead of applying a fixed rate based on their standard rate one, you might need to take an average rate and apply that. So if you were to change the rate here, again, if you change it to the front, they might have two rates, 150 and 200. If they work 50% of the time on both, you could make an average of that of 175 and apply that to the rest of the year. So that is one way that you can do that. I will just go through and create another budget here and I'll use the calculator. Instead of using the, the, the number of hours for the year, I'm going to say I'm going to put in, well, this person's 80% chargeable, so 20% of their time. They're non-chargeable. I'm not even going to split that between leave or whatever. I'm just saying 20% of when they're here, that they'll be... Um, non-chargeable on leave. They don't have to go down to the granularity of using admin and unavailable time. A lot of people just use this method of putting in 20% here, 15%, 10%, whatever it is, to get back to a percentage that gives them a target for each week of what they need to be as chargeable. So that, that can be used in your practice IQ reporting for a target percentage. The other consideration that you might have is you might have a lot of staff members and you have a lot of staff members that might be the same type of staff members. They're both full time and they have the same percentage that need to be applied. You can actually use your action menu and you can duplicate budgets from one staff member to another. So I can copy John's and I can give that one to Annie. If I hit refresh, we now see that Annie has a budget as well and it's an exact replica of John's. Okay, if you're copying from one user to the other, you need to be very careful that your users have both the same um, standard hours, i.e. they both work full time or they're both part time to be able to apply the same um, logic. If for some reason 
um, you've copied a staff member from one to the other. If it's copy Annie's to to Tony's, because Tony wasn't quite full time in this example. If I refresh. When I look at Tony's, it could be possible that Tony has got negative in some areas. So you can use check balance for situations where you've copied a budget from one person to the other and you've copied it inappropriately because there's only 37 hours, you've got more particular leave than, um, than is available. It will go through and allow you to go and change that for that user. Everything will highlight in, in red. So that's our duplicate function. The other function that we have on our menu here is that you can also apply templates. So for Corlees, for example, I can apply a template to Corlee if I set up a template. So you'll see how I can set up a template. So each year you would set up templates. So if I change my view from our um, budgets to templates, you'll see the screen will change. It'll now say budget template. I can then create a template and I might call this full time 85%. Okay, so it's going to pick up full time. I'm just going to put in my admin. I'm going to load my calculator. I want 85% productive and that is my budget template. Okay. Go back to my budgets and for core leads, I'm going to click on action and apply that template and it's now applied that into core leads budgets. So setting up your templates, if you have a lot of staff members, you might set them up by um, grade by team, full-time, part-time, so that you can easily um, apply those across the, the number of staff members that you have. It's not essential that you change each of the status for each of the user to, to complete. It's just a visual cue for you internally to know that those budgets are complete um, for the user. One of the questions we often get asked is, how can I print this information? So we can look at whichever view that you've got here. There is an option here to export the budget to Excel. And it will give you basically what you see is what you get in your Excel um, file for that particular user. Of offline then. All right, so that's our capacity budget. Report unallocated on our action menu. It's going to show me all the fee earners that don't yet have a budget. Okay. Clear locking is a function that you can use so that if you've got multiple people entering budgets, when you click on something that somebody else is in, it will say the budget is locked by Tanya. So if you want to clear that locking, you can clear it. It just means that it's, it's a, su a support tool to make sure that two people can't be editing the one budget at the one time. Okay, the capacity budget that you're seeing here is the default budget that we have um, in our practice management software and in practice IQ. Let me just open that again. So there's lots of ways that you can manipulate that to use it simply or you can use it quite advanced. Can you set up groups is a question. Accountants, seniors, managers, admin, partners. Yes, you can set up groups. However, <clears throat> excuse me, at the moment we do need to add, there is a grade that you could use so that you can set up your groups here. 
we have it on the enhancement request to be able to also group your staff by grades to make that easier when you've got lots of staff. Okay? At the moment you can see it by partner, manager and department. So will the load calculator work if you enter leave manually and then apply a percentage to the remaining time? Uh, yes it will. It won't make the net capacity go into a negative if you use the calculator. Okay. You see in the example that I did before I did type in 260 hours. It only came up with 238 hours once it applied that because it won't put the weeks that were already on leave um, into negative. So then you would go and adjust the, the remaining weeks. Okay, so what are the, uh, what's the purpose then of the other budget? So we have here a capacity budget. As I said before, you can either set and forget it and just use that as a fixed budget that's not a dynamic budget. Or you can come in during the year and update things for leave and adjust it um, as you're going for a true capacity. If you're doing that, every time you adjust that, you then have a, a moving budget target. It's a, a dynamic budget. The default of the dollars for that will be the charge out rate times the hours of that, that particular week. Some of you have already calculated a dollar figure budget per month for each staff member based on your own calculations that you may have already entered into Excel and you come out with the number and you want to be able to put that number, a financial number, of a budget per staff member. And you don't want to break that down by weeks. In that case, this is where the financial budget comes into play. In my example here, I think I grabbed Corlees and I said she was 85% productive from memory. And I have created a capacity budget as a target of 85%. When I click over to financial, you'll see that you have financial. My, my average, oh, my total dollars of the budget, of the capacity, of the gross capacity would be this number of hours times 150 is the budget that I see here under my financial budget. Okay. There are options here where you can show the hours or not. In my case, I just want to show the dollar figures because I'm interested in entering the dollar and I don't necessarily need to see the rate. So if I move over to financial and I want to put in a budget dollar figure for the staff member for July, I can do that quite simply by just putting in $22,000 there. And July, I can round that down to $20,000 and these might be the figures that you have in your spreadsheet. And they, they might be slightly different to what the capacity comes out of. But it gives you the opportunity to load up a strict financial dollar budget per staff member. So for me to get to that page, I need to have had put a basic capacity in first and then I can go through and put in the financial budget which may vary. So some people use this as the financial budget is the fixed dollar figure that the finance team have put in and that's, that's one measure of reporting. And the capacity budget can then work as a true dynamic flowing budget as you're going through. The other way that you can load that um, capacity is you can just load it straight from your capacity budget and it will be exactly the same. Once I have done that once, the capacity budget and financial budget are now disconnected. They are independent of each other. So I'm going to go through some questions. We've got a question here of can you set budgets seasonally where you expect to have 50% billable for June and then maybe 80% in July. You can do that because you could go back to your um, capacity budget here and if I go into the first week of July I can oops, go edit mode and in that week rather than loading the budget calculator I'm going to um, apply a percentage of 
50% here. I'll apply that to all weeks. Then I go through and then I'll get to August and I want to increase August then to 80% uh, etc. Then I can go up to August, go on that week, right click, apply the percentage there and it's just gone on to my other screen, sorry about that, but I put in 80%. Cancel that. I wouldn't be putting 80% there. I would be putting 20%. Apply that to all the weeks. So I could go through on a, a basis like that to go through and adjust the budget. So the question is, where do I put through the budget of productivity percentage for staff? If you just want to use it as a basic budget percentage for the staff, then I would just pick one non-billable item like I have here and then use that percentage and apply that. So you don't have to go down to the granularity like I did in the first one of separating everything out. Okay. So, do we have more questions on the way that we've entered the budgets? We will probably go for another 10 minutes, so I do apologise. We will probably extend the time a little bit so that we can get some more questions through. Let's come back and have a look at what else we have. Okay, so where do we actually report? How do we use these numbers in um, reporting? So in practice management, there is an application called productivity. This is used where you don't have practice IQ. So in the productivity application, you tick the box to extract all the staff members. Then you select the yellow can to extract the information for those staff members. Show month from show weeks rather than showing it a weekly. Then I show the details. And then you can extract that into Excel. Or you can do what I've done here is just select a particular staff member or the total, depending on who you select on the left hand side. You'll see here that you have budgeted productive hours and a dollar figure for that. So when you pop that into Excel, you can extract that for all the staff for the relevant period and you can get some basic productivity out of there. I will come back and answer another question that's popped up. The next process of reporting available is the practice IQ reporting. Typically there would be a period to date and year to date utilisation report and in that report you will see the dollar budget and the budget hours. Those columns by default come from the capacity budget. So if you've decided to use the financial budget and you want your financial budget to be represented in IQ, you will need to log a, a change request to make that change in your practice IQ module. Because it's a fairly straightforward change, I'm suggesting there would be no cost involved for us to change the standard for you from a capacity budget to a financial budget. It would still need to go through our call queue process with the tech team to make the change in the report, but if it's a straight switch from capacity to financial, then I'm sure we can do that at no cost. If you wanted to make changes to other calculations or measures, then that would involve a cost because there is no standard process, um, you know, there is no standard calculation for that. Everybody has their different way of doing it. So I'm going to open up some more report, uh, some more questions now to you. Um, I'm going to go back into the budgets application. There was a question I have around, is there a reason why I entered the straight percentage down here under non-billable administration as opposed to if I want to reset that budget? Instead of using adjustment, load in the calculator from adjustment and put in 20% non-billable there. There is no reason why you can't use that less adjustment to give you a straight 80% um, productivity um, calculation. 
both get the same result. There is no preference over one method over the other. Okay, I will leave the question pane open. A question between productivity reporting and practice IQ reporting, do they both report the same in practice IQ? Will the budget dollar figure and the budget hour figure both come from capacity and those figures would be the same? There would be other items that would differ in practice IQ from productivity. The difference mainly being is that this extracted period that we're looking at in productivity is looking at timesheet entries from the 1st of July to the 31st of July and it's looking at build written off and unbilled of only those timesheet entries. So if you're looking at a WIP movement report in Practice IQ, that would be quite different because Practice IQ works by periods and the build and written off would be a different different calculation because it's not looking at the same timesheet time, sheet time uh, transactions. It's looking at what have I built in this month as opposed to whether those transactions are related to this month or any period. So that's mainly the main difference between um, productivity reporting and practice IQ reporting is the whip movement for the, the staff members is going to report differently but certainly the budget dollar and the budget hours are the same. So if I choose to use the financial budget option in Practice IQ, will, then will I not be able to see the budgeted productivity percentage? The budget productivity percentage in Practice IQ would be a calculated measure where it says give me my billable budget hours divided by standard hours. That will give me my productivity target percentage of 85% um, as a, a budget target. The utilisation percentage would be um, typically out of the box in Practice IQ is the utilisation percentage is the charge hours divided by standard hours less leave. Okay. So they do, do get different um, options um, and the calculations that you can do on Practice IQ are fairly endless in terms of making sure that you have the data in your practice management system. There is also options into Practice IQ where you bypass the budget module altogether and you can upload dollar figures per staff per team directly into IQ and then you manage that through IQ, there would be an additional cost for that process. So if you use practice management, there's no extra cost in that, but if you want to bypass the practice management budgets module and just use the tools in IQ, there would be an additional setup fee for that process. So some frequently asked questions. We did have a look at how do we deal with rate changes. If I change a rate, I can go back in, reactivate the budget, go into the week that had had that rate change and um, adjust the budget. Sorry, adjust the hours. What happens if you have terminated staff? What's the correct process? Before you go and um, close the staff member in your fee unit console, we recommend that you do go into the budget application first and review the budget that that staff member had. Update that first before you terminate the staff member. Weekly budgets, if we change from three to five or five to three days, how would we do that? Very similar to what we did with the rate change. Um, if I changed my standard hours, When I go back in to budgets, if I clicked on that staff member, it would tell me that there was a change in standard hours for that user. And if I right click on edit mode again, 
edit mode. View budget week. If I had made a change here, it tells me when I changed that particular hours. So then I would go to that week and then apply the change. There'll be another button that will come up in the right there. So we've looked at those. Changes to capacity. Do I need to update the financial? If I change my capacity budget and I'm also using financial, do I have to update both? Well, that's a user decision. Once you've created the capacity and the financial budget, after that initial creation, they are then separate items so that you would mean to maintain them if you choose to. Some people decide to leave the financial as fixed from the start of the year and that is the financial planning budget and the capacity then becomes the dynamic. Can you set up future employees, i.e. you know that a particular team or a particular manager is looking for a senior level two in September, how would you go about doing that? The way that I would suggest is that you create a staff member called Senior Level 2 for Partner A, um, add that staff member in with the start date of September so that you can then add the budget in for that staff member. When the staff member comes on board, you would change the name of that fee owner in the fee owner console to be the name of the staff member and just adjust the start date accordingly. We talked about um, how to establish budgets as a target percentage in Practice IQ. Um, we, can, we can do it through the budgets application so that then you can keep um, historical targets in Practice IQ so you can track how a staff member goes from one period to the next. If you want to use financial budgets in Practice IQ, you will need to log a change request. Um, I will let the team know that I've suggested changing it from a capacity budget to financial budget, that we will do that at zero cost. Um, however, if there is other calculations that you want to do, there would be a quote required for that. You're probably looking at this time of the year around a five to six week lead time to get that change through. If you don't have Practice IQ and you want to print out all the staff budget totals, how do you do that? You would use the Productivity Reporting tool to complete that. You can export each individual staff member to Excel. You can do that through the budget application, but to do the whole staff, you would use the Productivity application for that. So additional support. If you would like some support from a consultant, you can book a consultant through APS Consulting at Reckon.com. We also have the online help, which I showed you earlier in the help screens. You can go to the KB articles, and there's also KB articles on how to enter and use budgets. And I will show you where the link will be for the training and events on the Reckon website. So if we open up our website. For so those of you that haven't had a chance yet to look at the new website, when you go into the website you will see the accountant page up the top and you'll go down to APS. Coming down into the APS you'll see that there is a client area and you'll have the support tool. So if you want to look, check out the knowledge base articles you can go there. If you need to lock a call, you can do so here. And the webinar that has been recorded today will be available in the upcoming webinars link because this area will bring you to our training and events page. So if you've got other webinars that you want to attend, they'll be listed on this, this here. There'll be more webinars added in August, September. They go up to July at the moment and recorded webinars, today's webinar will be added to this section of the web page. So if you have missed any webinars, then you can go back and have a look at the recordings of those. Okay, so they will be available for you. There'll be two added up um, in the next 
40, 24 to 48 hours for today's session as well as the new staff and standard matter rollover process. Okay, and if you need to book a consultant, you can do that on this link here as well. Okay, I did run over a little bit of time there, but I hope you found that useful. I can see that um, there may be some more questions. I think I've been able to answer most of those. I will leave the, um, the panel open and I will review any questions that I may have missed. Um, and if you do need to want to talk to me directly, then you can just raise your hand and I will unmute you and you can call me. Uh, we can talk on the, the webinar or you can email me directly at apstraining at reckon.com and I will answer those for you there as well. Um, okay, so just to recap, uh, what was the practice IQ report that I was looking at? Typically there'll be a report that would be available called period to date and year to date utilisation. If you don't have that report, you can see those figures and add them into any practice IQ area by right clicking and grabbing it from the field list and bringing it into the report. If you don't have that report available, then you can add it from the standard library into your version of IQ because this report has been fairly consistent since about Practice IQ 8.5 onwards. Might have a different number at the front, but the, the details here have been fairly standard for some time. As I said, I will leave the questions pane open. Um, officially, we've finished the webinar, but I will stay around for another five minutes if there is more questions. Otherwise, enjoy the rest of your day and thank you for attending this session. Thank you everybody. Um, actually, another question has come through. Can we do a bulk upload of budgets rather than individual in version 9 if we have 300 plus staff, including non-billable and unavailable time? The answer to that is that we could do a bulk upload. It would be a customisation. Um, in, in that sort of case, we will be looking at what would be the best solution, whether we put that straight into practice management or whether we put that straight through into Practice IQ. So it will depend on whether you want the ability to adjust it, um, but we have, have done some bespoke customizations to be able to import an initial starting point in the process that we've talked about so that you can use the budget console. So it is possible. To access the productivity reporting, um, sorry, you would need to have that added on to your Joe admin rights to be able to see that. Productivity, as I said, you would extract the users, hit the yellow can, come over to the weeks. And you'll see here I don't have that many budgets entered in at the moment, or I've got some in there, but they might be the same as my capacity, uh, my details, and I can look at it in a single view, or I can export that into Excel. This one's going to give me the whole gear for all the users. That might take a little while with my Excel. Um, and we do have manuals on the productivity application. If anyone needs those, then email me at apstraining at reckon.com and I will send you the productivity manual. We are looking at putting the manuals up on our website as well so that um, people can have them more readily accessible. They would be in your original practice management um, documentation folder if you still have access to that.
Okay, the numbers are slowly departing. As I said, um, if there is any further questions, please email me at apstraining at reckon.com and I will answer them for you. All right, we shall end the webinar. So thank you very much, everybody, and uh, we'll see you at the next one. Thank you.